Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Today we are talking about complex numbers. Our to-do list, the first on our to-do list, we have uh, what is a complex number? It's a really good thing to kind of put it into context and to see the big picture. The next we'll do a quick review of the imaginary unit i, and then we'll give you a definition of the complex number in its standard form, which is a plus bi. Then we'll talk about complex conjugates because it's very often that you deal with complex conjugates if you're dealing with complex numbers. I'll also put a list of these items in the video description with timestamps so that you can skip ahead if you like. All right, let's start. So what is a complex number? This is the big picture. So a complex number deals um, with everything, actually. A complex number is really includes everything that you will see in an algebra class. So complex numbers are broken down into two groups. We have the real numbers and the imaginary numbers. The imaginary ones are the numbers that have the I associated with them, and the real numbers do not have an I associated with them, like six. The real numbers are broken down further into two more categories the rational and the irrational. The irrational are numbers like pi or e. An irrational is anything that cannot be written as a fraction of two integers. And a rational can be written as a fraction of two integers like one half or even five because it can be written as five over one. So beneath the rationals we have a smaller subgroup which is the integers. The integers are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and on in both directions. And then inside of that, we have another smaller group called the whole numbers. And that is just the positive integers plus 0. And then we have a, one smaller subgroup inside of that, which is called the natural numbers. Sometimes it's called the counting numbers because it... Uh, is everything in the whole numbers but zero. So it starts at one and goes up with positive integers. So this is the number system that you've been working in, in, in algebra and really probably all of your schooling um, in K through 12. So all of these fall into complex numbers. So complex numbers involves everything here on the screen. Hopefully that helps you put things into context. Let's talk about the imaginary unit i. So i, by definition, is the square root of negative 1. If you square both sides of that equation, you square i and square the square root of negative 1, you get i squared equals negative 1. And those are two definitions that we use very, very frequently. Whenever we're dealing with the imaginary unit, or if we're dealing with a negative inside of a radical that has an even indexed, um, or an even index, then we want to change to I form. Which means, so the radical is out here in front. If it's not there, it's assumed to be a 2, which is an even number. So we have an even index radical that has a negative underneath. We'll pull that negative out, as can be seen with these two intermediate steps. And we'll end up having the I out front. So... We'll always want to change to i form. So this example here, the square root of negative 25, the i can come out, and we have square root of 25 left, and that is um, square root of 25 is 5, and so we have 5i. Let's talk about complex numbers. Here's your definition in standard form. So a complex number involves two parts, a real part and an imaginary part. There is a real component to the imaginary part. This b is a real number like 5. But then you also have the i, which is the imaginary unit. And the real part has no imaginary unit. It's just a real number. So we often write the complex number in standard form. It's conventional to write the real part first 
and then the imaginary part second with the i to the right of the real part b. What is a complex conjugate? Well, a complex conjugate is a complex number, and you have just changed the sign of the imaginary part. So each complex number has a complex conjugate. And one way that the complex conjugate is used is when you divide complex numbers, you use the complex conjugate. But finding a complex conjugate is actually pretty easy. We just change the sign of the imaginary part. So here the sign is positive for the imaginary part. So the complex conjugate would be negative 5 minus 2i. Down here, the negative or the uh, imaginary part is negative, so we would change it to positive. So we'd have 6 plus 3i is the complex conjugate to 6 minus 3i. The note, the, the real part, we don't change at all. So this next one, we have just the imaginary part for i, so we change its sign, right? Negative 4i would be the complex conjugate to co the complex number 4i. And our last example is 5, which is a real number. And this complex conjugate is just 5. So why didn't I change anything that time? Notice all of these three examples above it had, a co had an imaginary number included with the complex number. And that's the, that's the part that we changed the sign of. But this last example, it didn't have an imaginary part. So I couldn't change the sign of an imaginary part. So for a complex number that just has the real part, that real part is its complex conjugate. So it is its own complex conjugate. Kind of cool, huh? Well, that's it. There's your introduction to complex numbers. Um, hope you enjoyed A plus BI. If this was helpful, leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you have a great day.